Ever since I was about 13, I've wanted to study abroad in the UK. The Harry Potter series introduced me to the British Isles when I was nine. And by the time I hit middle school, I was a full-blown Anglophile. I read everything I could about the UK, and after some time, I found myself becoming especially taken with Scotland. I was so in love with everything I read about Scotland that I wanted to experience it firsthand. So I spent a month during the summer after 11th grade traveling through the Scottish Highlands and Islands with the Experiment in International Living program. That summer changed my life, and I knew I had to go back to Scotland, and soon. At the beginning of my second year at Grinnell, I began to think about what, where I wanted to study abroad, though, truthfully, there was no real question that Scotland was the place for me and would give me the study abroad experience I wanted. Despite some people's suggestions that I look at countries I had never before visited, I determinedly applied only to programs in Scotland, and a year ago, I received word that I had been accepted as a visiting student to the University of Stirling in Scotland for the fall term of 2010. It was the most amazing, most fun, and most difficult semester of my life. When I left for Stirling last September, I thought it would be easy to spend a semester in Scotland. I had been there before, and I thought I knew the country well. So imagine my surprise that I began to experience culture shock and homesickness just days after my arrival. It turns out that while I thought I knew Scotland inside and out, my first time there was just a taste, and I still had a lot to learn about my host country. At the University of Stirling, things felt like the opposite of life at Grinnell. In Scotland, I lived in a student flat, which meant for the first time in my life, I was preparing all my own meals, grocery shopping each week, and generally being more responsible for my day-to-day well-being. I had also never taken public transportation before in my life. But in Scotland, I had to take buses and trains everywhere. And let me tell you, the first time I took a bus to town, I was terrified. And the first time I went grocery shopping, I ended up nearly in tears from the stress of trying to find familiar foods at Tesco's. School-wise, Sterling was totally unlike Grinnell. The lectures I attended each week were huge, some with over 150 students, and I often felt like I was lost in the crowd during class. This made paying attention difficult at times, despite the small discussion portions that were held each week to supplement the lectures. Within the university system itself, courses of learning are much less flexible than at Grinnell, with students declaring their majors when they matriculate and focusing nearly entirely on that subject for their stay, rather than the looser American liberal arts practice of taking many different classes before officially declaring. Learning there was also more individually directed than what I was accustomed to. At the beginning of the term, you receive a list of dozens of readings by topic, and you pick and choose which readings from each topic appeal to you, usually two or three per week. This was also something hard to get used to at first, because I was so afraid of reading the wrong thing or missing some important information. However, I'm a nerd, so even with my hard time adjusting to a new academic system, all three of the classes I took I enjoyed, and taught me a lot and helped me gain new perspectives on my host country. As an anthropology student, it's a little embarrassing to admit that I still had an exoticized and romanticized version of Scotland in my head less than a year ago. But gaining these new perspectives from my coursework and living a typical Scottish student life has been an invaluable experience in experiential learning and paradigm shift, and one which was only made possible by a school that, ironically, didn't teach a single anthropology class. After the stress I experienced at the beginning of my stay, I managed to relax and acclimate, make friends, and adopt the easygoing ways of the Scots. I enjoyed going out in the evenings with my friends and traveling throughout the semester. I took program-sponsored trips to the Highlands and the Scottish borderlands, both of which exposed me to some of the most beautiful places in the world with long, distinct histories. Within my own community in Stirling, I went to a Guy Fox night celebration in the nearby spa town of Bridge of Allen, and I also attended Sunday services several times at the local parish. Through the university's international society, I attended a Cayley, or a party of Scottish song and dance, at a local hotel where I listened to live Celtic music and learned to dance a Scottish reel. I also took time for trips of my own devising. With my two best friends on the program, Beth and Ashley, and I, spent long weekends in Edinburgh and London. And for our fall break, Beth and I went to Paris and Milan for three days each. It was incredible. Here I was, just an ordinary student from a little Midwestern town in some of the most cosmopolitan cities on earth. I was seeing sights and experiencing things I'd only read about in books. And although I had fun on my travels, I also found myself longing for the familiarity of Sterling, 
showing that I was beginning to think of Scotland as another home. Leaving Scotland and my new friends was hard. I spent my last week in the country shedding a lot of tears. There would be so many things I'd miss. The Stirling campus is beautiful, with its own castle and lock. And it turns out that I love living in a flat and cooking for myself. I came to appreciate how good Scotland's public transportation is, and how amazing it is to be able to hop on a plane and 90 minutes later land in a different country. I miss the nightlife. Going to a club just up the road or out for pints at the campus pub with friends was really a lot of fun. And, as surprising as it sounds, I miss the food. Bangers and mash is my favorite British dish, but I also enjoy freshly smoked fish, butter scones with Scottish strawberry preserves, and sweetest of all, sticky toffee pudding. This isn't to say I didn't miss the States at all, because I did, and I cried a lot then too. I missed American cheeseburgers and driving my car, and not being the one with the foreign accent. I wanted to see my mom and dad and my friends at Grinnell all the time. That semester certainly had its difficult moments, but the good times more than outweighed the bad. Now that I'm back in the States, I'm a different person than the girl who left the Midwest at the beginning of last September. I still love my dear Scotland just as much, but lots of other things about me have changed. I'm much more confident in my abilities in taking care of the practical aspects of my life, like buying airline tickets, paying cell phone bills, planning meals, and generally getting on in what we college students refer to as the real world. I also have a new understanding of what it means to identify as an American abroad, and that the American ways and ideals are sometimes not the best way to do things. For instance, I now, more than ever, support socialized healthcare, having used the NHS when I had a foot injury last fall. I have a new appreciation for the Grinnellian liberal arts education, which I feel is a better fit for me, rather than the more rigid British model I experienced for four months. I have gotten to better know modern Scottish culture in all its forms, like its burgeoning stand-up comedy scene and its national passion for sport, rather than the tartanized version of Scotland with which many people are familiar and take as gospel truth. I can tell you with confidence that Scotland really is so much more than the beautiful and wild highlands, even if that's the global reputation, and that Scots have many other reasons for their famed national pride. My friendships with Beth and Ashley, along with the native Scottish students I met, are still strong and still very much a part of my life. And today, months later, I still try and stay abreast of British current events and culture. I hunt down my favorite Scottish treats, and I think I'm permanently stuck in the habit of calling my mother, Mum. After this past semester, I now consider myself multicultural and plan to someday return to Scotland, not just once more, but many times. It sounds cliche, but my semester abroad was probably the most transformative experience I have ever had in my 21 years on Earth. Thank you.